Welcome into the DNVR Avalanche Podcast. We got AJ, we got Eric, we got uh, Rudo coming to you live as the Evs. I mean, let's face it. They they beat a team that they were significantly better than. Are they? Did you watch the game? Oh. <laughs> Damn. Like, and I, not that the Avs didn't play very well. They did. But my Body. God, that Columbus team is bad. Which, which. What stat gave it away? Was it the 50 shots on goal or the six goals? or Which stat didn't give it away? Dude? Yeah. <laughs> the Avs didn't even take a penalty. I mean, I guess Manson got five for fighting, but. Hell yeah, he did. Zero power plays for Columbus. In this five game. for aggressive hugging Matthew Olivier. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank God. Get you some. Uh, we might take a broader look at things throughout this post game because there's. It was really a pretty straightforward hockey game. But. Let's do the 60-second rundown before we do anything else. So, the first nice. period, the Evs completely dominated, but uh, <laughs> were unable to finish their chances. Uh, they do end up giving up the first goal of the game. That would be the only one Columbus scores, though. So, sometimes things happen. They would get that goal back in the first period to make it 1-1. They probably should have scored two or three, but some great saves by Elvis and some straight-up misses slash posts from the Avalanche keep it 1-1 for one period. And then the second period happens, and the Avs never look back. The Avs' best players show up. You get goals from Miko. You get goals from Ross Colton. You get goals from Kale McCarr. You get goals from Nathan McKinnon. You get goals from Val Nachushkin. And the rest of this game is is literally just a shoot-around for Colorado. Mm. They double up. Columbus on shots. I think it shots ended up what fifty two to twenty four. I think somewhere uh, in that neighborhood. Miko has a every multi goal every, night. It, every time we get into a post game, I look at the shots right before we start, and I'll and check ten change. minutes in, and they're different. And then I'll check when I get home, and they're different again. I don't want to. I don't want to give exact Bur- numbers. Bernie could have scored in that game too. It uh, it felt like there were a lot of goals going in. We'll put it that way. Um, yeah, there definitely were. Abs do go give up the first goal. I, this is the one actual negative I'm sure we'll talk about tonight. Just padding your stats. Comeback. Is wins. that it? No, it is another. It is technically that another is comeback, comeback win. win. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. They lead are, the league. Oh are you God. looking into that at all? That the Abs. No. Maybe we're a little bit of a slow starter against this Columbus team, or is that who cares? No, I'll go first. I mean, I, 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 we were sitting, AJ and I, I said, give them 10 minutes. They're going to get on the board. I, they ended up falling behind. When you've been, like we talked about, you know, like you've been gone on the road, you come home. Yeah, at least you had that one day. But the first 10 minutes, sometimes you're a little sluggish. And, you know, they, they weren't sluggish, but they were just kind of, eh. And then that's, that's when Columbus took the lead, and then they weren't on the board. But as soon as they got on the board, you knew that it was going to be a matter of time. So. All good. All in yeah. all, it was like I said. It's not much to. <laughs> it's not much to say bad about. I mean, this was. They did what they had to do. You yeah, know, I, I don't think they broke a sweat, but thank God, because they could have been ugly. And it wasn't. And it was ugly. <laughs> I. I I don't know how to really get into the analytics of this game, because the analytics are all. They're kind of fun. The Avs played a high school team tonight. Like, that's what the analytics look like. I, I'm sure there are some ridiculous numbers you have on there, AJ. Five v five tonight. Scoring chances were forty nine to twenty. Forty nine in a one game. Yeah. What high danger f- chances? Twenty four to six. Oh my god. Oh. Consistent. They they allowed two high danger chances per <laughs> period. Just to make sure he was awake. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, shots on goal, F, again, at 5v5, 43 to 24, and shot attempts was 81 to 50. Even in the first period, in which we would agree, some sluggishness. Yeah. Uh, 16 to 12, 8 to 5 shots on goal, 11 to 5 scoring chances, and 5 to high danger chances. So even in their not great portion of the they game. They dominated. Yeah. yeah. And uh, at f- again, 5v5, they generated 4.63 expected goals. Which, if you ever look at expected goals, that is an astronomical yeah, that's number. ridiculously high for expected. Uh, and <laughs> allowed 1.92, which is would be a little higher than you would like, except 
point eight eight of that came in the third period of that game, and who gives a shit? When so. the game was over, over. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you wanted to get into the individual stuff, uh, you know, there's some silly stuff like Jonathan Druin, 23-4, to four, oh. shot attempts. <laughs> okay, dude. Hilariously, hilariously, uh, Colorado's top line. I guess can't call it top line. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that conversation. Can't really call it that, but but uh, Val Nachushkin and Miko Rantanen and the negatives tonight. Which <laughs> <laughs> is pretty funny. That's amusing. Yeah. Miko with a multi-point night, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with Miko Rantanen on the ice tonight, Columbus outshoots them. Actual shots on goal, 16-9 to nine for Columbus. Oh, yeah. A lot of turnovers. <laughs> yeah. Miko. Well. Fair enough. Which is pretty funny. Um, also, hold on. Yeah, 11 of their 20 scoring chances came with Ranson in on the ice. <laughs> Nine against the rest of the team. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Jeez, buddy. He's out here struggling. Yeah, and he has a three-point night because... Because he's Miko. Uh, that being the Miko life. Must um, be nice. Must for, the, for the record, do not take those numbers seriously in any direction. They mean absolutely nothing. In yeah, the, it, lo- it looked, the eyes said that the Avs dominated this game. The <laughs> eyes were correct. Yeah. Uh, talk about a couple of guys here. I, I want to start off because he didn't make our three stars. Ross Colton does get on the board. It is a nice little tap-in goal, but that line showed pretty darn well tonight on the whole. Yeah. It's like a bad team, sure, but... That's who you get healthy against. Yeah, exactly. Exactly my point. Eric, are you happy with the Avs' bottom six? Let well, me I'm, ask you that. Oh, I love them. So let me ask you it in this context. Yeah. Today, do you roll it and have Kovalenko as the 13th? Or do you put Kovalenko in? Well, I, again, it's hard for me to say, cause, and it's hard for Jared Bednard to say. He's never played a game in the National Hockey League. So, I mean, until he comes over, goes and gets himself into a game, see what he looks like, see what he can bring, see what he can do in this league, then you figure it out, you know what I mean? And then, But, again, like we always say, like you could be a 13 forward when this playoffs start, and then when it's all said and done, you're, <laughs> you're in a prominent role. Like, who knows, right? You know, so... Who knows how they're going to want to play their cards? Who knows how the, again, I'll knock on wood, you know, how the injuries are going to be. And, you know, there's always one or two banged up, and that's just life, and that's just every team. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, I, I, I'm going to wait to see what I, what I know of him after a couple games, you know what I mean, and, and just make an assessment right there. All I'm saying is it felt like, I don't want to say it was personal, or I don't think the Avs have any beef with Columbus or anything. Dude, if there was animus with the Blue Jackets, it would be the first time that has ever happened with that organization. But this felt like a team that wasn't... This game wasn't, oh, hey, we're up 4-1. All right, this is over. This was, yeah, we're going to go get some more. Cookie! I I just... I don't think there was any gearing it down tonight. I think they were just bored. (laughs) They played one game in five days. I think they're just bored, dude. I think they were like, we're going hunting. You know, they saw a wounded gazelle out there, and they were pure lion tonight. That's all it was, man. I think it was <laughs> boredom. I think it was just boredom that took over. Just ready to eat. <laughs> I could say it four more times in case I didn't make my point already. Would you say they were bored? I think they were bored, man. <laughs> they were hunting what? Gazelles? They were hunting uh, Yanks. Jesus. Because it's the Blue Jackets. And the Avs are the... They're the burgundy coats? Does that work? I don't think that works. I tried my best to get the analogy in there, but... Burgundy is gross. Really? I kind of like the color burgundy. Oh, man. I've disliked it for so long. All right. Fair enough. You like whatever colors you like. It was my middle school's color, and then it was my high school's color, and I'm just like, man, it's the Avs color. I'm like, come on. Such a mid color. It's the color of a gazelle. Mm. No. It, it is when it's bleeding <laughs> from getting murdered six to one. Uh, it, uh, other notable guy in this game, Val Nachushkin, scores the sixth goal of the night. It wasn't really meaningful, but... It was fun to watch. It was fun. 
Power move to the net. Says, what's up, son? Uh, nice play. Middle stat. It, well, look, it, the Avs are middle stat, Nachushkin, whatever. Pick your guy that joined the team. Undefeated with all these dudes in the lineup. AJ, you mentioned it in the pregame. Is the uh, is the masterpiece complete? Hang it in the Louvre. What? <laughs> you, you talked about the Avs being an unfinished painting in pregame. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think the only way that uh, you know they are Michelangelo on the the ceiling Justine right Chapel, now. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Working on it right now, you know. Got to finish it up, though. Exactly. Okay. Uh, they're 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 working on it, but uh, it's it. You don't want to draw like strong conclusions because they just ripped apart a bad Columbus team. I, but I, they've won yeah. eight games in a row, and they are that's six and my, zero post deadline. That's my and they beat some great teams, and they beat some hot teams. So it's they're just doing what they're supposed to do. So like, like what's what what are you? They can only play the team that they're that, that's on the schedule, that's right? It was something right, that we talk about all the time. You you play the team that's on the schedule that night. They play Columbus. They obliterated Columbus. Uh, yeah, man. I think that they. You look at the Avs right now, and I asked this in the in the pregame, but what's their weakness? They don't have didn't one. have one tonight, buddy. <laughs> they haven't had one since the trade deadline. True. What's the weakness? I don't have a good answer for you on that one. Somebody, find me the thing that makes you look at this Avalanche team the way they're playing right now. And I understand. They're on an A-game winning streak. When you're hot, you're hot, for sure. Everything works when you're winning, right? Yeah. But there really isn't a thing. They're not, outscar- uh, they're not outscoring their problems. This is not the 5-4 games that they've been, uh, that they got into earlier on. So frequently in the first half of the season. Their goaltending from both goaltenders has taken a big step up. I feel like I'm Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> they just keep coming up. I got to be. We'll stop. But I, I just, I think we're going to look back at that, as Chad just mentioned, the Nashville road game where they Turning lost 5-1. Yeah. It felt very sour. You and I were very, Pissed. Eric and I were very much off camera like, we're pissed. done with this shit. Yeah, yeah, this team doesn't have it. This current iteration of the Avalanche, this team's not going to do anything. And since then, they went out, they major roster shakeups, yeah. and and they seem to have it now. <laughs> and you're looking up and down the lineup, and you're like, what's what's the weakness here? I, this is the team that you should be hyped on. This is why we said, wait, give them give them until the deadline. I, I I've got I figured the weakness out. It's Michelangelo painting the ceiling. Who's the guy that's like touching fingies with God on the ceiling? I'm sure Chad will know. Ricky Bobby. It's not Ricky Bobby. No. Well, if there's somebody touching fingers with God, it's probably Kale McCarr. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, I don't know who it is for in real life, but I'm saying someone needs to Photoshop Gabe Landeskog's knee touching God's finger. That might be the Av's only weakness. Yeah, Landy's knee. Yeah. <laughs> eh, too soon. <laughs> eh. Anyway, it might be a little bit of an off-the-rails pod. Uh, let's do these might first. Be. Since you guys quickly got us 100 likes, we appreciate you. Some pretty easy Dr. Dub's Vitamin W winter shots right here. Good stuff. Happy to, happy to have some freebies. Pinky up. Pinky Cheers, up. chat. <laughs> English style? With those done, let's get into our three stars of the game. What was yes. that? Normal. That's whiskey. Mine was normal. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, star number three, Kale McCarr puts one in the back of the net to get the Avs tied in the first period, a two point night. It was kind of the end of the competitive portion of the game. Yeah. Got the one that mattered the most for Colorado. Yeah. Great little passing play, too. And and a guy who felt, I don't know, Kale McCarr has been a, a weird point in the Avs lineup for about a month or two now, where it feels like he hasn't quite gotten to that unbelievable level that we all know Kale McCarr is capable of. Not that he's been 
bad. He's had some bad games here and there. Mm-hmm. But you see nights like tonight, and it's a it's a good reminder that oh right, he can kind of just dunk on everybody sometimes. Mm-hmm. Fun to watch. Yeah, it's it's fun to like see him against like a Vancouver and Edmonton. You know, a good quality playoff team. And you're like, yeah, he's still really good. And then you see him against a bad NHL team. Yeah. And you're like, oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Columbus would kill for a defenseman that's like 80% of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. And not Kale McCarr, but also credit Sean Walker. I know you guys were fawning over him on some of the plays tonight. Uh, was it which goal was it that he just second goal bodied them at the red line and yeah, yeah it's the second goal where he just stands him up at the at the blue line yep. takes the puck away from him and immediately gets it to Zach Parise on the other end and it was like good, good team or bad team good team or bad team I mean there's a reason the Abs have the puck the whole game because it starts with the back end so Kale McCarr. Has the puck the whole game. Walker has the puck the whole I mean, it, you know, Devontae's has the puck. I mean, it's we've seen Manson lately just dangle guys and have confidence with the puck. I mean, it's it's amazing how much controlling the game from the back end makes a big difference. And then Kel McCart tonight, you saw it, like you said, you know, like, was he out of this world? No, but he's, he's Kel McCart. He was awesome. Like, he's just one of the best players on earth, so... What do you say? That's it. I think that's how we feel, and, and probably a lot of abs feel after games like this one, right? What do you say? They were, they were just better. For for my money, he was not. I loved Kill McCarr, and we put him here. I put him here just because it was a big stats night, and you know, yep. there are a lot of guys that you could make a good argument for the third star in this game oh, in particular. For sure. But special shout out to Sam Gerard, who I thought was Colorado's best defenseman he in was this awesome. game. Wish he would have finished that one opportunity. Uh, first, but I yeah. was happy to see him get an assist, though, because yeah. I was like, yeah, the point, all right. For sure. Yeah. But yeah, he, I thought Sam Gerard was Ooh, <laughs> baby good tonight. Sam Gerard is the whistles. <laughs> he definitely was the whistle go woo. <laughs> yep. They installed it on the back of the Avalanche car, and that was Sam Gerard making the woo. Goes, woo, woo. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, I'm I'm dumb. I Georgiev, not Cogs. Uh, what? Oh God. Uh, number two, Miko Rantanen. This is now five goals in his last two games, a three point night. And uh, look, I I said this on my review video the other night. Miko's not a perfect player. He's going to make no. mistakes. But when Miko is playing the way he's played over the past 45 days, he's giving you so much more than the mistakes that you are happy to live with all of them. Look, he's a transcendent offensive talent, and when that's on display and it's, it's rocking and rolling, what? You, you live with whatever other nitpicks about his game that you have. Yep. The, the laziness and the cuteness and the cutting the corners. You live with that stuff when he does special things. When you all there is to it. When you're gonna go see the review from Rudo and you know on on YouTube, right? Yep. He picks up the puck on on Val's goal there. He picks up the goal and uh, the puck in his own end. He's just shoveling that puck one hand, you know what I mean, with his right hand, and he's pushing the guy with his left hand, being the moose that he is. And then it's two three strides, and next thing you know, it's an odd man rush. I mean, there's not many powerful guys like that in this league that can do that. There's Dreisaitl, there's him. All of a sudden, he just gets in there, drops it to Middlestat, right, and just takes the D with him. Middlestat, great pass to Val. I mean, that is like pure magic right there. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and, and yeah, he's got the turnover. Like I always say, listen, if you try shit and you're on the ice a lot, you're going to have turnovers. It's just the way it is. Yeah. If you play six minutes a night, and every time you're out there, you have a turnover, and you bring no offense. That might drive a coach just crazy. You know what I mean? You're not going to see the ice much, you know? But when you're Migo, like, you know, for what he creates and what he brings, like, you'll live with the odd turnover. I mean, the the, the few turnovers a game, <laughs> you know, because he is. I mean, look at that shot. Look at that one-timer. I mean, it's sick. 
It's a sick shot. You just wonder why we haven't seen him more. That's exactly. Not that's not going to Fifty. Just I mean, want to know why we haven't seen him more. He's going to get hundred points again. Like he's what is he at now? He's pretty damn close. Like ninety four, something like that. Yeah. Um, actually, after so about three he's point fun nine, to watch. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, fun I, to watch. Uh, ninety six, I think. Uh, I he's know. the guy that I've always compared him to the most. Uh, I know early in his career we called him Baby Yager, but. I think I think he reminds me a lot of of Kenny Malkin. Yeah, really big, obscenely talented, and he he'll do some dumb shit. Yep, you get frustrated as a fan yeah, or as a coach, he's, and he's got a bad temper that can get him into some penalty trouble from time to time. But that's a good and analogy. then he'll do some shit you can't even imagine. Exactly, when he's rocking and rolling, he's rocking and rolling. <laughs> I love it. He wins you games. Yep. Uh, and then number one. Once this game was secured for Colorado, the only thing anyone cared about was Nathan McKinnon continuing yep. not just the home point streak, but his current total point streak. Yeah, it, it's funny. I didn't even care. I don't I don't care about the like overall scoring streak. Yeah. It's nice because the it's home like what, like eighteen games 17 or something? Or 18, yeah. yeah. I wanted to get to twenty just because that's a quarter of a season and that's pretty fun. <laughs> But Which he already has a 19 game one this year. Yeah, exactly. By the way. The but it's like one. the home one. You're like, just keep going, man. Yep. Just, just keep going. Keep now we're invested. <laughs> you know what? Now, now we're invested. Once you started passing guys up for four times, third, stuff. second, yeah. most second longest, like just keep going, brother. Get as close to Gretzky as you can. There's very few guys in their entire careers get an opportunity to chase any of Gretzky records. Yep. If you're even within. T- t- uh, uh, binoculars distance. In the distance. same breath is ridiculous. Yeah. Scary. Even if you're, you can even see it through binoculars. Just keep going, buddy. So that was our, that's why he's the number one star. He got that goal in the breakaway and it was like, this game's perfect. End it right now. Run the clock. <laughs> the Avs have won it. They are blowing them out. McKinnon has a point. And then he got another well, one. He scored for, a bunch more goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For funsies. Hell yeah. Eric, you played with Wayne. Yes. Was there ever any any record tracking back with him back then while he was setting some of these ridiculous... I mean, you played with him at the end of his career, but... Yeah. Was the conversation already there about how all of these records he had were never going to be broken? Oh, yeah. I mean, he was still getting 100 points when I was playing with him, so I yeah. mean... Um, he wasn't putting up 200 points a season. No, when you exactly. He was getting like 100 and something. <laughs> uh, thanks to me on his left side. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, but it's like every time you played, there was so many records, and there's so many stupid records too. I mean, not stupid, but like things you don't even think of. You know what I mean? Like, and he's got them all. Like, what does he have right now? Is it 52 records? La- it's la- last time I looked, it was 56. I 56. Know, I know a couple of them got taken, but I mean, it's, honestly, a, it's absurd. It's absurd. What he? I mean, it's absurd. I mean, he was so much better than everybody else, but. Look, I mean, I, I would have never said this before, but now you got Ovi that's 50 goals away. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's absurd. Um, you got Nate that maybe he's going to tie something, you know, knock on wood, uh, you know, something like that. Cause you can, no, you can beat him because there's he more games. Yeah. That was an 80 game schedule back then. This is 82, so there's one more game. That'd be awesome. Now, I think Wayne's that guy, and too. I'm, I'm, like, I'm sorry, but like. It is March 22nd, and he has scored in every single home game I know. this season. The season started six months ago. Not quite six months, like but five and a half Nikita months Nikita Kucherov, yeah. Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews. Cool. Whatever. Pick your, you know, choose your fighter. This guy has scored in every single home game. That's consistency. I'm sorry, but it's March 22nd. That's super cool. <laughs> It's nuts. When like you I think just, about it, it's nuts. I don't. I don't want that to get lost in the oh, it's he. He got to thirty three games. He was still eight shy or whatever. What? It's March twenty second. He scored in every home game. Yep. That's badass. Once it got to like twenty five, it started to dawn on me how stupid this streak was, <laughs> and just be like, this is the coolest thing. Like, yeah, it's a specific record. Oh, the. Home point streak to start this. It's shut up. This is awesome. I, I'm sorry. Even if uh, he loses the Art Ross, but he scores in every home game, he better get the heart. So he better. I, I think I'll this is people. an interesting conversation because 
I, I sit here all the time and you hear those crazy stats about how like all oh, this specific thing in this way has happened and, the, and this and that. And those stats are usually pretty funny that I don't take too seriously. Yeah. But when you start doing something 30 games in a row, there might be something to it. No, nah, that's just pure luck. <laughs> You're talking, and you're, we're going to get to the end of it, and he's going to, like, however long this point streak goes, we'll look back and he'll be like, oh, he has a 19 game point streak. Oh, he's got a whatever 17 game yeah, point streak, however, now, however yeah. long it ends up being, till he, like, you start to add them all up, and you're like, that's a lot of games. What? <laughs> There's 82 sick. of these things. <laughs> he spent half the season on a streak. Exactly. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> He had like nine points in the first ten games, and then he's <laughs> took off like a rocket, and yep. he's just gone. Yep. It's so silly to me. It's so silly. And then he's got the two streaks where he just didn't do much. Yep. Coming out of the All-Star break and the and first ten, I think it was the first ten games yeah, of the something season. something like that, yeah. Every other portion of the season. Unbelievably good. It's been <laughs> unreal. awesome. It's so, so special to watch. Heart, heart, heart. Hard, hard. He's the favorite. He better win it. That's all I got to say. Uh, Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I hope Tampa fans are calling him Mac Altitude. <laughs> if it was so easy, why isn't your guy doing it? He doesn't even have to play at altitude. Oh, still, there's no challenges. <laughs> on that note, if you want to go put a bet on Mac for Hart, go to Circa Sportsbook. Jump on that. Jump in with all of our gambling on the March Madness bracket. A lot of upsets so far this year. Yeah. There have been quite a d- few. D- d- this feels like a anecdotally to me. feels like a normal March. Sure. Fair enough. Yeah. I Kansas d- won, so I'm good. Uh, yeah, you you said to bet against them, so. <laughs> oh, I'm, I have big money against them tomorrow. There you go. They are, I think Gonzaga is going to blow Just them out. Just destroy them. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can go throw that bet down. You can go bet along with our all-day watch-alongs of the March Madness Tournament. Uh, I think they're still there. They might still be down there doing it, to be honest with you. They started at what, like 10 a.m. today? And they, they're still going. They are down. They're sitting at the table. I don't know if they're still doing it. There's at least one There's at least one game still on, I see down there. So. I am the one that has to end the stream. They <laughs> oh. <laughs> they can't have, can't have ended it. <laughs> uh, That's tough. Join us for that. Go to circusports.com. Download their app today. Throw some bets down on March Madness with us. Have some fun with it. Tune in if you got some downtime this weekend. It's always a good time. Uh, with Circus Sports Bets, you can only be making them while physically located in the state of Colorado. Must be 21 or older. All rights reserved. Circus Sports Colorado encourages you to gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call or text 1-800-GAMBLER or visit problemgamblingcolorado.org. And then, look, when you're up 4 or 5, 1 in the third period of a game you've dominated, crack yourself open a Breck Brew. Enjoy yourself an Avalanche Amber Ale. Because you've earned it. You've dominated. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite craft beer, the craft beer of DNVR. Don't get me wrong. I like myself a Coors Light, too. But if I'm looking for a craft beer, it's got to be Breck Brew. Uh, you can find it near you anywhere in the 50 United States. Use the Breck Beer Locator online at breckbrew.com. Uh, and it'll show you the nearest liquor store with a Breck Brew for you. Dozens of flavors. There's something for you, no matter what. Uh, second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. Uh, what did you guys think of Georgiev tonight? Uh, cool. Yeah, Obviously man. not a huge test or anything for him, but... The two goals that got behind him were both weird. I'm, neither one of them bother me. Well, yeah, well, one, well, one that counts, yeah, yeah, yeah. but both of them that end up in the net were weird. Can, I don't uh, care. Hey, can we all agree that the second one should have counted? No. I know not according to the rule book, but... No. Right. No goal. Don't hand pass. Fuck off. <laughs> don't make me laugh. <laughs> Uh, He's we, hurting. <laughs> oh, God. Instead of me being mad about this, we do have Georgiev's thoughts on the game tonight. So let's hear from him. Oh, jeez. Uh, every game is important. For yourself personally, you know, you've been able to string together you know, several quality starts here. Is it easier for you to you know, build on one good start to the next you know, rather than you know, having a little bit of the up and down? Yeah, I think, uh, I think defensively we've been playing a uh, really good ball here recently. And, it's, um, it helps helps you out, and you, you try to make those big stops as well when you need those. But uh, we're playing really good. 
Alexander, you're out there for the whole game. You're seeing everything that's going on. How do you see this game unfold from your perspective? Just uh, spending a lot of time in their zone, and I'm kind of uh, waiting, waiting for something to happen. Um, three one coming into the second, we're pretty in, into the third. We're pretty happy with that, and you know that they're gonna make their push, and we're trying to play smart and score the next goal. We did that. Great, great job, guys. You guys start out down. This team leads the league and comeback wins. Does that give you confidence, knowing you know even if a goal goes in early, this team can come back? Yeah, definitely. It's it's a long game. I just wish that maybe we start with a goal some <laughs> a little more often uh, than the other team. But uh, you know, it's 60 minutes and uh, it's a lot of hockey left. So. We're confident. Georgia, you know, with kind of a sleepy start to this game, was it a little bit difficult having been rested for as long as you were to kind of get going? Or, I mean, just ready to go out of the gate? Yeah, no, uh, just trying to be there right away to the start. Kind of slow start, like you mentioned, both teams maybe. But you, you try to just play the game fair, and um, I, I felt better as the game went on. That's it. Thanks for so there's Georgiev, uh, you know, again, I don't think that this game is a, a gold star for, for any particular reason. Columbus isn't a very good team, but it's another game in the row here where you're getting that quality performance yeah. out of Georgiev. Got some reps in, you know, yeah. I mean, got a little sweat. All good. You know, made some good saves, looked sharp, was on top of his crease, was looking good, was moving good. Did what he had to do. It's awesome. Look, I mean, not very nervous, you know, like he wasn't very, I mean, I'm not no. trying to hand wave this because earlier this year, we were just, just get to 900. Yeah. Just yeah. get to a 900. That's it. And when his numbers started to come up, it's because the abs started giving up 28, 30 yeah. shots per game. He was busier. So he held down a game where tonight, halfway through the game, he'd faced what, like seven shots? Tonight, <laughs> 23 saves on 24 shots. Pretty low workload. Generally. Nothing free. Yeah. The only goal that gets by him. It's a cross crease pass. Like the well, guy clubs it, but what are you going to do? And it's a, it's a goofy one. Yeah. And it's just like, you know what? You give up one goal in an NHL game. It's all good. Unless you lose, unless you lose one to nothing. And I got nothing to say to the goaltender. Even then, good I, job. Even then, I don't have much to say to the goaltender. Good you job. Lose one, that, nothing. Yeah. That's doing the job. Yep. Yeah. And then, like you said, the other goal that beat him is complete utter nonsense. He are had, we and didn't count. <laughs> this is like, are we so re far removed from just begging Georgiev to be competitive that suddenly a 9.58 save percentage in a game is isn't worth praise? Yeah. <laughs> no. Did his job. Did his job. Gold star. Well done, sir. Love it. It just feels nice. And oh. the Avs have been on an eight-game winning streak, which is great. But I think a lot of them have been pretty darn competitive hockey games. You look at a whole bunch of overtime wins in this streak, a bunch of one-goal games like the 4-3 win over St. Louis, uh, a good amount of comeback games. This one, technically a comeback, but was it really a comeback? No, come on. It was nice for Colorado to get an easy one. And, and they yeah. should have easy ones against a team like Columbus. I won't, you know, they did what they needed to do. But in winning close games is important. You also need to prove that you can go out and just stomp a team when you need to. Well, well this time of year, too, because you saw <laughs> this is the perfect example tonight that to watched the game. You saw one team that's a Stanley Cup favorite pick, right? You know what I mean? Like, getting ready to go in about a few weeks from now at the big dance and then you saw a team that's going to be playing golf here coming up and that is nowhere near contention no, I, of a Stanley Cup so you real, saw yeah. it right there right? Columbus I mean, can't wait for this season to end that's, that's what right. I'm saying so this is what you saw tonight the, the, the disparity was the Grand Canyon like it, it was ridiculous like it, it there's such a big and it's demoralizing if you're Columbus Management. I mean, we don't even have a GM right now, but I'm just saying, like, coaches and and the guys on the bench. You're just sitting there, and you're like, wow, that that's what a team looks like. Well, yeah, I think we're pretty far away from that, yep. and it's discouraging. It is. It's reality. Yeah, I, I'm sure it is. Yeah, I, I look. Yes, Columbus was hurt, 
Like, I showed I showed Rudo the list of scratches. The, uh, yeah. Oh, how, yeah. How many no, of those we, dudes are hurt though, and how many of those dudes are they just being weird about? It, is that the difference between six one and what? Six, maybe it, it being four two. two? <laughs> you still lose pretty handily. Yeah. Like, yeah. give me uh, no. Miss me with this. That's a bad hockey team. Yep. There's a reason that they're at the bottom of the standings again, near the bottom of the standings again. Yep. It's a bad hockey team. It's yeah. bad. It's, it's, it's an organization in flux. They're in a bad spot. Oh, the Avs get so. them uh, the, now, now just once in One two weeks. Time, yeah. When they go to Columbus, it's crazy to me that we got to March 22nd. And they Without still, them playing. Yeah, they hadn't time, played. Yeah. It felt like it had been so long since the last time they played was in Finland. <laughs> but... Yeah, that's literally 16 months <laughs> between playing. That's crazy. <coughs> and it looked just the same. Yep. Looked just the same, man. So it's, you know, that's a bad Columbus team. Uh, the, the funny narrative around every good hockey team is that they always play down to their competition or whatever. It really hasn't been the case this year. The Avs have beaten up bad teams. Yep. The one loss to Chicago is the one that you can point to. They threw a game away against Nashville, and they blew a 4 nothing lead against uh, Arizona. Yep. Arizona. Those are, like, bad losses. I wouldn't say that's playing down necessarily. But, but right, but you look at it, and you're like, against San Jose, Anaheim, yep. sh- three of the four games, they shut Chicago out in three of their four games. Yep. Like, they blow out Columbus tonight. They've taken care of business against bad teams. It's true. Don't you, have- what you have to do. Yeah, of course. You have to do. And you continue to put pressure on Dallas also wins tonight at home against Pittsburgh. All right. Pittsburgh goes from Pittsburgh goes from Dallas to here. Yep. They have a noon game. In my opinion, the likeliest chance for McKinnon's streak to end is in a game like that. A weird one, yeah. A weird, a really weirdly timed hockey game. I'm sorry, a noon puck drop? That's, that's a tough one. It's really early. That's you want to talk about circadian rhythm. You're supposed to be getting done and leaving the rink after yeah. morning skate, go not gearing up to go toe to toe with Sidney Crosby. Point. Yeah, it, it's, so, it's definitely weird. It is weird because you're doing the math and you're like, okay, so twelve minus this is when I, I usually get, up at get 4 a. What do I yeah. eat? I usually <laughs> eat salmon, rice, and broccoli. Now I'm like. Salmon for breakfast, baby. No. <laughs> or some guys will. Some guys are weird. They'll be like, yeah, this is what I'm eating. And some guys will be like, oh, bacon and eggs, buddy. You know? <laughs> Pancakes. Uh, I don't think we have a ton more to say about this game, but Jeez. Jared Bednar sure does. So we have Jared Bednar's postgame presser for you here. Take a listen to what Jared had to say about this one. It seemed like uh, a little bit of a sleepy start, and then you guys really just ramped it up there in the second. Was there any kind of message, or was that like a, hey, we need to get our lights on? So I liked the way we were skating in the first period. I didn't like our decisions entering the offensive zone. So we slowed it down too much in the neutral zone, and then too many turnovers um, entering the offensive zone, like over the blue line, between the blue line and the hash marks, too much east-west play. So. We were too many one and done, so we didn't spend enough time in the offensive zone. But I liked the way we were skating, breaking the puck out. All that seemed to be fine. Um, so that was the message after the first. And we, we were quicker in the neutral zone, more quick ups, and guys skating and pouring onto the puck, which led to better entries, better like chip four checks that we came up with the puck more. And then we had a good ozone period too. The decision to switch McKinnon and Middlestad after the first, was that just a case of using this game to experiment similar to what you did a couple years ago? A little bit. I didn't like Max Sign wasn't doing a lot. You know, they were part of the one and dones in the first period. And, you know, part of that is why go back to something that's exact same? Like Miko has not played with Middlestead yet. You know what I mean? So I thought, well, if I just flip those centers around, we might get a little boost out of, you know, both lines. And um, yeah, we did. I think Miko and Middlestead, they scored their first shift together and had another one later. And then obviously Matt got on the board late after that. So it just, it is experimenting, get them familiar with one another. It's a good game to do it because we had, you know, a comfortable lead at that point. And, you know, also those lines weren't like 
click and you know so I thought might as well give it a try. Two out on the ice during the game. Does that play into that? Out of Nate and Fat oh yeah, and yeah. Well, they feel it, right? Like they they know what they're used to normally doing on the ice in the ozone time they'd spend the chances that they'd create they had a lot of chances by the end of the game no question um i just felt like they were just off a little bit tonight early on in the game how nice is it, how nice is it to have that flexibility again you know with your lineup that you can yeah you got to have it I mean, if you're gonna win you got to have it yeah and it's really nice can you put your finger on just the the early goals that allowed even though you guys play so strong it seems pesky First two, three shots yeah. that the goal last. Yeah. No. I mean, tonight, I mean, it just depends on the night. You know, sometimes they capitalize. I mean, you're, gonna, you're giving up scoring chances throughout the course of the game, right? Um, we, we had, that was a bad breakdown on that goal. We, were, we didn't get sorted out quick enough on the arrival in the D zone. They find we were slow down low, we are slow up top, we are slow down low again, and then the guy slipped to the back door and we're just like our awareness was poor. So, I mean, if, you're, if, if that's what that shift looks like and play looks like, I think you have to expect to get scored on. So, but we had a couple of those in the third period too that we kept out of our net. So, I mean, teams are getting it early on us, but we just stuck with it. and. Got better. Corey. You, um, you also you put Wood and Colton back together. Yeah. And that's, that might have been, I'm guessing that was one of the better games. I, I, like, I like their game tonight a lot. Yeah, we, we've been talking back and forth as with their line. And I mean, I feel like they should be playing together. They get along great off the ice. We've seen them play some great games, you know. Uh, great stretches of games. Uh, when we went out east, they were our best line consistently for a while. And, you know, so I know that they have it in them and they just have to work through some issues. So we talk about a few things, but great conscience on the defensive side tonight. Physical went to the net hard, drew penalties, banged in a rebound goal. You know, I, I like that line a lot tonight. Do you, do you see guys who don't get along off the ice? Not well, no, but they're like, Inseparable. <laughs> Val obviously had his off ice issues almost a year ago in the playoffs, and then yeah. comes in this year, has a strong start, has to leave for a couple of months, comes back, he's yeah. kind of kept going, and now he's got a career high in goals. I just, I guess, could you just kind of like, how do you put that all together to see him playing? This well, game? he's been improving every year. I mean. <clears throat> I don't know. He's he's healthy. Feels great. Like he went through some injury troubles last year, right? If it, things that keep you out of your, out of the lineup tend to take away your rhythm. You know, nagging injuries take away your rhythm and your ability to play the way you want to play. And he's fully healthy. He's a more experienced guy. He plays with really good line mates every night. Um, you know, so it doesn't surprise me that he's hitting career highs. It's been a journey for him, no question. You know, it takes, I'm sure it takes a lot of discipline to, you know, stay focused on what he has to do and hopefully he can continue to do the same things he's been doing throughout the course of the year for us. Talked a little bit about Casey this morning, but it seems like almost every game he's got a different lineman. He seems to adjust like it's nothing. Like, does that just speak to the IQ of a player like that? Yeah, well, he is a high IQ player. He is an intelligent hockey player, especially when, like, when you um, look at how he maneuvers around the ice on the offensive side of things. He's a committed defender, though, too. But um, you know, I feel like the wingers that we're playing with, whether it's Joanne, Lekkinen, Val, Ranton, and like those guys are all really smart players and bring a little bit different skill set to the table. But it's still within the structure of our game, so. Um, you know, he's able to find guys in open ice. Everyone sort of should be moving into similar spots. <laughs> so he, but he's doing a nice job distributing the puck. There's no question. Coach Miko, you talked about uh, how the games are now, you know, obviously meaning a lot more towards the end of the season. And do you think that has like something, a lot to do with how his intensity has kind of just amped up the last couple of Miko's? games? Miko's? Yeah, I mean, he's been playing hard for us. I mean, they, they, all of our leaders know how important it is, like the message that we're sending, that we're fine-tuning our game. So it starts with them. You know, they're the guys that are out there the most. They're out there in all the key situations. They're playing against the other team's top guys every night. 
they have to lead the charge and when it comes to like the commitment of our game and and the details that we're talking about if otherwise no one else will follow suit so they 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 have taken charge and they've ramped up the intensity and you know that's what we've come to expect from him but Miko's certainly one of those guys and he's getting rewarded for it too now look at his offensive production over the last little bit's been off the charts last few ones go ahead sir uh, Coach, you jumps in Denver Gazette. You uh, see the stand in the third period um, for Nathan McKinnon, 33 straight home game to the point, rubbing shoulders with uh, Lane Gretzky. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about what it's like as a coach to uh, be coaching a part of history with a guy who's uh, rubbing up against a great one. Well, I love I love coaching the guy because he brings an intensity and a, um, a drive to his game that's like unmatched, in my opinion, in the league, right? So... Um, this is just the the streak is a result of all the hard work and dedication that he brings to the game on a nightly basis. So there's not a guy on that bench that didn't know he hadn't had a point yet. And then when he got it, everyone was pretty happy, you know. And you can see like he wants it, you know, like he's you know, a little ornery on the bench in the start of the second period when he when he hadn't got a point yet, you know? So that's this a pressure that he puts on himself and you know, he gets the one and then relaxes a little bit and all of a sudden the then the second point came a little bit easier for him, you know. So he's gotta stay in the moment, keep playing his game and hopefully the streak continues. But everyone's rooting for him. Okay, thank you, Jerry. No, thank you. Thank you. I got a question for you guys. No. Who is the least jacked person on the Avalanche? Player. Jack, we mean like Muscles. build? Yeah. Adam Denmark. <laughs> oh, sorry, Daddy. I love you, buddy. <laughs> well, I mean, Dad, current, but. Dad bod got traded to Philadelphia, so I don't know. <laughs> I just, how, I'm just trying to think. Hold right, on. Let me ask it to you this way How many people are less jacked than Jared Bednar? On the avalanche. I don't know, man. That guy goes to the gym I'm, a lot. I'm saying it's got to be a few, right? Like, a lot. We'd have to ask Megan, but I know after practice, in, he used to make us wait because he would do his pump in. He yeah. would go work out after they practiced. In great shape. He's in great shape. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> These days are behind you. Bro. <laughs> He's in great shape. And then he would walk in that skin tight shirt. I mean, I, I gotta like, be honest. This with you. guy's a—he definitely had some gun show insurance. Yeah, sure. this guy's a beefcake, I, 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 man. I gotta be honest with you. Like, again, I'm not in great shape right now, you know. <laughs> but I used to be in great shape. But I never took my shirt off, like in the room where all the cameras are. Like, grabbed my mesh bag and went behind closed doors where the showers are and got undressed. I mean, I—I I don't. Know. It is, there's some guys around the league. They'll do like interviews in between periods without a shirt, and it's like, huh? There was a there was an Av defenseman once upon a time. We'll tell you his name after the show. <laughs> there was an Avs defenseman once upon a time. Every single time the media walked into the room, if he was wearing a shirt, it came off. Yeah. Most of the time we walked in and it was already off. And he would just sit he would sit back in his locker. And it was like, we get it. You're ripped. And it was like a huge part of his identity. And if I was as bad as that guy being an NHL player, I would probably have my physique be my identity too. He wasn't here very long. (laughs) He wasn't any good. But he was, give him full credit, he was ripped. But that was was rocking. That was his thing. And in the couple of times that I interviewed him and talked to him, first of all, he was a dick, which I did <laughs> not appreciate. It was still early in my career. And second of all, he was like, he would, he would like look me up and down and it's like, like, no, no surprise. I'm not in great shape. I haven't been my, since I was a teenager, I haven't been in good shape. I haven't taken good care of my body. And that dude like judged me for it in every <laughs> you could feel him judging me in every conversation <laughs> and it was just like oh my god this is ridiculous <laughs> i mean I- so anyway if you tweet at me with who you think it is and you get it right i will tell you <laughs> there's no way people are gonna guess that no, guy there is no way Well, i'm digging right now mentally i'm just trying to think uh, if you're like these guys and you're too busy getting ripped to get yourself some meals factor meal kits are the thing for you. They're great 
Uh, obviously, we've had them before. I really like a lot of their meals, mostly because they're super easy. I got this. I'll take it away, dog. My entire household. There are three adults living in our house. <laughs> Every Tuesday night, we all get together and we we do we get fourteen factory meals for our house. We each get them. They get five. I get four because I'm at the house less. And we just burn through factory meals. And there are great options. There are balanced meals. If you are worried about uh, too much of this or not enough of that, there's thirty four menu items to pick from every single week. Thirty four. We we seriously. We are a big we are big advocates of factory meals in our house. And for the three of us, it's fifty seven dollars for each of us per week. And that's one meal. Yeah. That covers that covers one meal in a day. And they're balanced meals and they're really healthy. And they taste good, man. Like I'm it's not even like a like drinking a protein shake where no, you're like the food's actually This is a means to an end. It's actually good, man. I'm so excited that I get to do Factor, <laughs> just because he couldn't our, wait. He couldn't wait. I've been doing I've been doing Factor since the fall, and it has been a big time. Uh, it has been a big time part of my weight loss personally. There you is, go. Is my dinners are fed. when I get home tonight. I will eat a Factor meal. It's that easy. Does Frank Pepe do Factor? No. I will be eating factor meals in order to prepare yeah, for Frank yeah, Pepe. I don't think Pepe's help, helping the weight loss journey <laughs> too much. Uh, go head over to factormeals.com slash abs50 today, and you can get 50% off your next order with factor. That's code abs50 at factormeals.com uh, slash abs50. Jump on it. Get with them. Get yourself some delicious meals. Uh, and then when you don't care and you just want to veg out and grab some extra food after dinner, make sure you got your Circle K snacks going. Go grab those two delicious game day snacks. Exactly that. Exactly what AJ just did. Uh, use a QR code on screen or go to circlek.com slash inner circle to get a part of it today. It's not just snack deals either. Your first five Phillips at the pump give you 25 cents off a gallon with inner circle. So get with them. Go get yourself some snacks, some gas, some all of that good stuff from Circle K today. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. I feel like... For the record, Duncan Siemens was a very nice young man. He was. It was not Duncan Siemens. He was no, very, Duncan's very nice. Kid. Duncan's a great kid. <laughs> uh, third period. Honestly, I think we saved maybe the most interesting conversation about this game for last. Hell yeah. Let's talk about the Hart Trophy. No. Oh. Try okay. the, the thing everyone has been asking for did happen at least temporarily in this game. Jared Bednar. Mac won puts, the Hart Trophy? Yeah, that. Yes. It's over. Split. Season ended. Uh, Miko Rantanen gets put with Casey Middlestat and Val Nachushkin mm -hmm. for a good portion of this game. Ding, ding, the ding, first ding, shift ding, he ding, swaps ding. them, they score a goal. Nope. Middlestat's like, e -e -e, I like that. Well, Eric, you're the one in, in pregame who said, hey, this should be an opportunity to, to try some stuff, to find some chemistry. It, it, did they earn more than experiment tonight? Let me ask you that. Is this something we're going to see again? Well, you're probably going to see it again. Yeah, because I think he's not afraid to uh, do adjustments, in-game adjustments, right? That staff's not afraid of it. So I think tonight they were like, you know what? This is a perfect opportunity. Like we said before in pregame, you know, find some chemistry somewhere because you might need it down the stretch here. You might need it in the playoffs. I mean, it might not be like that next game. I, I don't know. We don't know. But – that was the right time to experiment with things and to see where you're at and to see where guys can go and see who meshes with who. You're going to say, I oh, know, but they were playing a peewee team. No, I get that, you know. But when, when else do you do? When it's 1-1 against Edmonton in a playoff-type game? No, probably not. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I hope you probably not. No, I'm just saying. But you, you now you know. You're like, okay, this works. And, you know, it, it's like a good practice time tonight for the Avs to try some things. And it was fun to watch. And you could see that. I mean, think about that. Val um, with a, a middle stat and uh, Miko. M Miko. I mean, are you serious? Like that was a great, that was a great setup. I mean, it was a great lineup. You know, it, it works well. Of course, Mac in there works well too. God, I mean, the guy's gonna win the hard trophy. It's not what we're saying, but if there comes a time that you're gonna split them and 
for whatever reason, for whatever your team you're playing, whatever matchups you're trying to get away from, and and it becomes a little bit more of a chess match in playoffs too, right? <laughs> chess, chess, chess. We're talking about big chest over there and big <laughs> D's, and God, he's got me going right now. But no, it becomes more of a chess match, and it was fun to see tonight. It was, it was, it was fun, and I think AJ's ready with some numbers here, so right. Um, do I know my boy? Do I know my buddy? <laughs> so, I know my buddy. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mentioned earlier you don't want to take too many of these yeah, numbers I know, to but heart. That's okay. But but let's see him. Middlestad, Nachushkin, and Rantanen played 737 at 5v5 tonight and were outshot nine to five. Outscoring chance six to four, and were three to three high danger chances and scored twice. So, if it works, it works, I guess. It's but. kind of a mixed bag there. Yeah, yeah. However, switching that line put Drew and McKinnon and Lekkinen together, a line that we've seen play together. They played eight nineteen at five v five together. Shot attempts were, I'm sorry, shots on goal were ten to zero. Oh. That's all. Scoring chances were eleven to zero, and high danger chances were six to zero. Pretty good. <laughs> so you know, mixed bag. Uh, let me ask you about that then, uh, AJ. Also, just uh, just because I'm looking at these right now, Ross Colton, Miles Wood, Zach Parise had an eleven to two shots on goal and ad- advantage and completely dominated. Yakov Trenin, Andrew Cogliano, uh, Brandon Duham. With a four to one shots on goal advantage and completely dominated as well. Obviously, just for fun, this Sorry, podcast has wanted to see Miko next to Middlestat for a while, basically yeah. since he joined the team. But, just to try it, brother. But how much of this is freed up by the fact that you are getting pretty high level hockey out of Jonathan Druin, who now has a forty three points in sixty seven games? On a the lot season. of it. And if we did the ten game. Caveat with Jonathan Druin. Yep. <laughs> He'd be pretty good. Was, what was that? 43 points? 43 points in 67 games. So he had 40. Minus has, those 10 He has games. 42 points in 57 games. Yeah, because yep. those first 10 were. Uh, since the deadline, five points in five games. It's coming from everywhere right now, man. When you're hot, you're hot. Yep, 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 yep. It feels good when the Avs top six is playing like a top six. We'll put it that way. Yeah, and like this is the first time. Also, I'm not going to be discouraged by those numbers. This is the first time that line's played together. Right. Uh, in terms of middle stat, Ranson and Nichushkin. Yep. That was fun to watch. And it just, it, it, brings, it, it brings different dimensions to your forward core. If at some point things aren't working the way that they want them to, you can always just change them yep there are enough proven combinations with next to nathan mckinnon uh, look, i mean if you're gonna get that kind of play out of jonathan druin and you put artori lekin in there uh, man you're there, fine there are times this season where you could put a baby giraffe next to nathan mckinnon and he'd still have a two-point night so <laughs> but it's but it's fun for jared bennar when he's got his eyes down on the bench and he's looking left and right, and then he sees those options. He's got a lot of options, yeah. It's awesome. You know what I mean? It's what you do with the options. It's always what we say, right? You got ingredients. Yeah. What's your recipe? You know what I mean? And, and, and I think Jared's been awesome. He's been masterful for a few years now. Um, and he's done it. And he's brought this, you know, recipe to a championship two years ago. Let's see if he can do it again now with a lot of ingredients in front of him. When he looks his eyes down on the bench and sees what's up, you know, it's fun to see. It is. And tonight was a fun experiment to see. Yeah. You know you, what I mean? You so. get to try some things. Well, and it's, Love it. it's why you have the 22 vibes to it. Yep. Because you had Nazem Kadri as that second line center when they won the cup. It's Nazem Kadri next to uh, Miko Rantanen. Yep. You'd, you'd separated McKinnon and Miko. There were stretches of that. Playoffs where Burkowski was playing on your third line. Yeah, it was JT Comfer and Andre Burkowski. Like. Yep. <laughs> and it's and it's fun to see them 
putting Eustace out there too. You know what I mean? Like yeah. again, in a different route. You know, looking down the bench, he's still part of the bench. It's fun to see that they're trying stuff right now. You know what I mean? Like they're trying. Let's go, get out there, kid. You yeah, know? it's awesome. All three levels of the team right now playing with confidence. Yep, love it. It's great. I no notes, as Megan would say. Yeah. Uh, all right. Any final thoughts on the Avs lineup on tonight's game? Anything like that? And then we'll, we'll do our last couple of wrap-up things. We talking about the Hart Trophy now? Go off, dog. I don't have any thoughts. There's only one thought. Nathan McKinnon's going to win it. That's the only I thought. I think he wins need. it. So. I, I, it could be such an interesting vote, right? Connor McDavid could have 100 assists. Yep. So what? Austin Matthews, 70 goals. Oh, wow. God, it's going to be tough for him to make it to 70 now. But. Nikita Kucherov could lead the league in scoring with 140 points, and Nathan McKinnon could score in every home game. Yep. Who's the most valuable? <laughs> they all make the playoffs comfortably. Yep. Who wins that? I mean, you know I'm picking McKinnon, but... I'm also biased, but, like... I don't... I'm biased, but I think he's been the most consistent, you know. I, I would. I, I agree. If I'm doing my best to remove my bias, I don't think you can pick Austin Matthews. I don't think you can. I don't I care agree. if he scores 70 goals. He's not the best player in the league. He's not he's the most the valuable to goal. his team. I agree. But between, especially between Kucherov and McKinnon. McDavid, too. I mean, boy, I, I think you can make a really good argument for Kucherov being the most valuable player to that Tampa team. Easily. Or McDavid, too. I mean. Also, I, I, I'll i just say, I get really tired of the, who else is he playing with? Braden points his fucking center. Yeah, Stop. Get it. Come on. Stop. It's not like Steven Tampa Stamkos, is a bunch of bums. On the power play. Headman, Stamkos. Come on. Stop it. He's passing it to Braden Point over and over, and Braden yeah. Point scoring a bunch. Come on, man. As Braden Point does. Like, just stop. Anyway. Mac for Hart. Make it happen. Yeah. The one, the one thing that McKinnon truly may have in his favor, all those other guys have won it. Yeah. True. And I, the voters and the voters are people. The pe- the voters are people. This is why I think Mac's actually going to win it. And they're uh, equitable, and they're going to say there isn't a strong enough case for all these people to win their second to one. To win a second yeah. one and not give, and which is where a lot of the narrative of it's McKinnon's turn. Yep. Drew Doughty won a Norris over Eric Carlson a bunch of years ago because it was his turn. That was the conversation started in yeah. like November and it just never stopped. They weren't even like sly about it. They were just like, "Yeah, Drew's winning this one as a career achievement award." <laughs> like, yeah, and he's it, too good to not have one. It might be this. This might be Nathan McKinnon's turn. I think it is. All right. I don't actually want to talk about the heart again. All right. Instead. Till tomorrow. Have the S found a guy who's adopted the 1-800 goals now? No. I'm happy to let that die with JT. Great. Don't call that. Call 1-800-588-2300. Empire. Instead. Empire today. Where you can get your flooring. Uh, We love their flooring here. We got our studio redone with flooring from them. It's great. So much better than it was before. I'm a big carpet guy. I love their carpet options. And the coolest part is Empire does a lot of the work for you. If you go to a lot of flooring stores, they'll have like hundreds of options of all sorts of nonsense and garbage that like is not good flooring and you should not buy. Empire weeds out all of those worst choices and only carries the best quality products. So you choose a carpet from Empire, you will get a great product. That's why you should use them. You can also go online, use their floor projector. You don't even have to go in store to see what a floor might look like in your space. Just measure out your space, go on Empire, project it there, and you will see how it looks. Get to empiretoday.com slash DNVR today. You can schedule a free in-home estimate if that's what you want. And all listeners get a $350 discount when they use promo code DNVR. Again, that's Empire Today slash DNVR for details. Uh, restrictions do apply. See the website for that. Last, but certainly not least, on a fun podcast day, Premier Members Credit Union. And if you're like me and you completely forgot about a bet that you hit tonight, that was plus 750. Yeah. Nice bet to hit. A little bit of extra cash. 
to put in the Premier Members, members Credit Union. Or maybe you didn't hit your bet. Well, all the more reason to sign up for Premier Members Credit Union because when you sign up with them for a checking account and get e-statements, they'll give you 200 bucks just for signing up. That's it. That's all you have to do. Premier Members Credit Union just has your back like that because they're great. Uh, you can go to becomepremier.com today to get all signed up, and they have a ton of amazing options, uh, ranging from high-yield savings accounts or 5% APY on your first $2,000 with their reverse-tier money market. Again, head to becomepremier.com to find out more. We've got some super chats to get to here. $10 from Stefan, who says, Mr. Eric, question for you. Can you take us fans through what usually happens the moment players get into the locker room and before media rushes in? As always, love the breakdowns on off-day pods. So right after the game? There's not even time. What? So there's not even time. Well, there's like five minutes, four minutes, you know. You know what? Usually what needs to be said is said there um, by the players, like good or bad. And then the coach will walk right through. Good or bad, we'll say what he has to say. And... You, you, you see a lot of it on Twitter now. You see coaches because all the me, social media teams are, are you know showing that. Yeah. And usually the guys will give their player of the game award or whatever it is. Every yeah. team's different. And and then media, you know, door will open and media will come in. So it's pretty quick. It's pretty fast. And, uh, you know, I always say that. Like, here's what I'll say. I always say that. The post game and then even post practice, you know, what you see from media is so different than what's behind the main room, you know, because all the shit and all the fun stuff happens behind that door, you know what I mean, where no media is available or, you know what I mean. So you really don't know the true I- identity or the personality of the guys until. You're behind those doors, you know. There's sure. guys that won't talk to the media, and then they're so funny behind goals, and they're a big part of the team, you know. JT so, Comfer. I was just going <laughs> to say. There's a lot of guys. I mean. JT some, Comfer was so frustrating because he would show that personality. Yeah. The second you hit and then record. Yeah. Anytime media would walk up to him, it was Mr. Straightforward Cliche. So boring. <laughs> it is what it is behind he those doors. The doing. locker room is so much bigger than yeah. what you see. What you see is just where you could dress. Yeah. In the equipment room, in the medical room, in the lounge, in the kitchen is so much more where the guys are themselves. But that's kind of what happens after a game. It's very quick by the players, very quick by by the coach, and it's very uh, whatever you want to say, cliche with the lines with the media is after that. Is what it is. Uh, thank you for the ten five dollars from K, who says, "Great pod, great team, great game." I don't know what that face is. I can't tell. Thank you, though. Well said, Kay. Much appreciated. Go Can't Habs. Uh, Ten Cool Facts with the Five, who says, let's give a shout-out to Sammy G playing the best all-around hockey of his career right now. Awesome. He's been really good since he came back, man. No complaints. Uh, thank you for the Five. Uh, I kind of want to go look at his uh, fancies and just see. They're probably very good, yep. Yeah. How good it is. Yeah. yeah. The uh, 3329, which would be uh, Wah and McKinnon, I suppose, from Ryan, who says 3329 for your first star and 33 home streak. Oh, that that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. 33 games. Uh, Passing the legendary Guy Lafleur. Lafleur is my fourth favorite player ever. But if you're wondering, Sackick McKinnon and Peter Stasny are others. Wow. Good choices, my man. Nordique and a Canadian. That's crazy. Yeah. I bet he's uh, from Quebec. That's how the loyalty is to the game and not the sweater. <laughs> hey, Guy was sick, buddy. That hair was flopping. It was sick. $5 from the Walrus who says, just going to pay AJ to dox the shirtless bunghole instead of guessing. Thanks. What did I miss? That's in reference to the locker room guy. Oh, I'm not, yeah, got I'm not. it. Okay, I see. I see. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. He had a bunch of tattoos going down his side, <laughs> and he always he always turned, showed it off a when people bit. would go to interview him. And I was like, "This is an audio interview, man." Do you lefty or righty? <laughs> You'll just have to find out. I don't know, man. He'll tell you after the pod. Yeah, of course. You'll get to find out. <laughs> Thank you for it was the. Always five. one of my favorite things, though, is that he would turn. Yeah. <laughs> look at all my tattoos, so, buddy. 
I'm, I'm recording you with my phone. This isn't a. I'm, I'm not using the camera. <laughs> and then last five dollars from Eminem, who says, "Hey y'all, insane game tonight. Was at the game. Let's go, Avs. Love what y'all do. Miko is just insane, along with everyone else. He's." Entirely capable of being a top five player in the world when he wants to be, man. He's that good. Awesome. That's it. That's all we got. We're going to get out of here. We got a day off tomorrow, but returning for the noon game on Sunday. Prepare for weird. Prepare for weird. As long as McKinnon gets a point, I do not care. It can be weird. It's fine. I'm out of here before this gets any weirder. We appreciate y'all. Go check out our stuff on the dnvr.com consider becoming a diehard if you love us we'll talk to you later